I've done some pretty tough challenges in Kerbal Space Program, like using only escape pods to get into space, or landing on every moon in a single mission. Today though, I want to try something even harder than those, trying to get into space with a thousand percent gravity pulling against me. In the title, I said this would be sun gravity, but in game, the sun's gravity is only about 75% stronger than Kerbin, which just didn't seem like enough of a challenge. So with that out of the way, I decided to drop into the vehicle assembly building and enable that insane gravity, and see what one of the simplest rockets would look like under these conditions. So after throwing out a command pod, you can see I put down a solid rocket fuel booster, and on that, I put down some fins. Now ordinarily, this rocket would absolutely blast off the launch pad, so I wanted to see how it would do now. Now going to launch this though, first thing I noticed is it seemed like I was in an earthquake. I'm not really sure why this is happening, although I kind of just assumed it was something weird going on with the camera. But you can see, trying to launch this off now, the engine's running, but it's not coming off the launch pad. It's only at the very end, once a bunch of fuel's been expended, does it finally come off a little bit. Now that absolutely was not an encouraging sign, and I decided to get rid of the fins to try to save on a little bit of weight. Now this did seem to help. I got off a little earlier, and you can see I got a lot higher, but I'm still nowhere near where I need to go, and I decided next just to try out adding on more boosters and see what it could do. Now this time at least, I got off the launch pad immediately and it see me going up pretty fast. Now this was actually a pretty big improvement, although even with this, I'm not getting over 2000 meters and you can see how quickly I'm getting pulled straight back into the ground. So after seeing that, I thought maybe liquid fuel is going to be a better way to go here. So I tried using a huge engine, a small fuel tank, and this absolutely rocketed off the launch pad. Although it ran out of fuel almost immediately, and then I fell right back down again. Now clearly, this is gonna be pretty difficult, and I was thinking I was gonna need some sort of angle in order to make this work, and I thought that a plane might actually be able to get me there. Now you can see what I'm doing here, just adding on some fuel tanks, adding on a pair of wings, and adding on an engine to the back. Now the advantage of the plane is if I can ride on the air, I should be able to save a lot of fuel, and since the aerodynamics should all work the same, this might actually help me out. So after throwing Throwing on some wheels and a couple of control surfaces, I decided to give this a shot, but unfortunately that earthquake seems to be a real thing that was bouncing around my rocket. I didn't really like to see that, and I was thinking maybe adding on some better wheels could help me out here, although now it just immediately flipped over. Now at least an option that I had here was to lower the spring and damper strength of my wheels, and this should let it absorb that earthquake a little bit better, and you can see already it's looking pretty good. So for the first time, I fired up that engine and wanted to see if I could get into the air. So trying this out here, I'm kind of barreling towards the end of the runway, and it was definitely really squirrely. The other issue I realized is I couldn't get this thing to pitch up at all, and once it flew off the end of the runway, it immediately got sucked into the ground. That was a pretty bad sign, but I figured that maybe a little more thrust could get me in the air. So I added on three more engines here and tried this out again, and while it was actually going a lot faster this time, it still was not getting anywhere at all, and pretty quickly I fell off the runway here and completely destroyed the plane. Now I was thinking one issue I might be having is that I don't have enough surface area, and this might help me counteract the gravity a little bit better. Trying to launch this though, I got turned around on the runway, and you can see I'm just riding across the grass. This ended up being okay though, and I was getting up over 200 meters per second, although I still wasn't getting anywhere close to in the air, and eventually it just disintegrated on the ground. So while the plane was a cute idea, it didn't seem like it was going to be able to avoid the gravity, although I did have another weird idea. Now you can see me putting down a motor here and a bunch of propeller blades. The plan now was going to be to try to make a helicopter. Now this might seem like it's not much better than the plane, but the way that things work in Kerbal Space Program is a little bit weird, and I was kind of hoping that the rotors were going to be able to work regardless of the amount of gravity. Now on the launch pad though, it didn't really seem like the rotors liked the extra gravity here, so I tried getting rid of a bunch of them and trying this out, it was looking a lot better. They can see they're able to spin pretty easily, although I don't have them rotated at all to generate any lift. They can see now that's what I'm doing. And for some reason, I was feeling really confident, so I also doubled up the amount of propellers that I had, and trying this out, it didn't really go very well. Now, once again, the whole thing was getting shaken apart, and Jeb didn't really seem too enthused by that. I figured that by turning on rigid attachment, it might make things flex a lot less here, and giving it a shot on the launch pad, 
now it just completely explodes instead. So that wasn't exactly great, and I finally relented and got rid of my second set of propeller blades and decided to try this out. Now trying to spin this up, the propeller blades weren't stalling, and that was a really good sign. I wasn't getting off the ground though, and eventually I realized I was spinning these in the wrong direction. So fortunately, I could just flip around the motor direction, that's a pretty easy fix, and trying this out here, you can see I'm actually getting off the launch pad pretty easily. Now I was surprised by how well this was working, because once I started messing with the gravity again, no matter what I set it to, it didn't really affect the speed that I was going up. Now unfortunately, I ran out of battery on this first test here, and started to immediately plummet back down towards the earth, but I decided to add on some solar panels here, and with these, now I'm able to recharge my battery, and pretty much just go as high as the atmosphere will let me. Now usually it's about 10,000 meters that I end up capping out on these sorts of things, and it seemed like this time it was about the same. Now while that's a far cry from the 70,000 I need to get out of the atmosphere, that's still a pretty big help, and even being able to get a rocket to that height means I'm avoiding the thickest parts of the atmosphere, and it could really benefit me. Now on the bottom of all of this, I threw down a small booster, and I wanted to see how high I could take this, and see if I could set a new record. Now unfortunately though, I could really only get up to about 8,500 meters before the atmosphere was too thin to support me anymore, and even this small amount of weight was causing a lot of drag on that helicopter. Now trying to launch this off too, I wasn't getting enough thrust, and you could see that I ended up falling for most of that burn. So while I was pretty unhappy with that test, it at least did prove this was somewhat possible, and what I wanted to try doing next was adding on a much more substantial bottom stage, and see if I could get this in the air. Now unfortunately, I didn't quite have enough thrust with those propeller blades to do this, and you can see I just started adding on a lot more. Now eventually here, I think I had like 48 motors or something, and this created a huge mass of propeller blades, but even this still couldn't get a pretty basic rocket off the ground. Now I tried slimming down my rocket here to see if I could at least get a smaller liquid fuel stage in the air, and while this was looking good, I was draining battery like crazy since I have so many more motors that need to run. Now an issue with this is my solar panels were now being covered by propeller blades almost 100% of the time, so they were pretty much not working at all. Now a weird solution to this problem I found was putting the solar panels on the propellers themselves, and while they spin around weird, they seem to work fine, and this let me actually maintain some thrust while I'm going up through the air. So with that, I just went up as high as I could go, and that was about 7,000 meters. I tried launching off the liquid fuel stage, but even this small thing is still way too heavy for that engine to push up, and I realized with how weak the propellers were, maybe just making a traditional rocket really was going to be the best way to go. So to hopefully make this work, I tried adding on a huge fuel tank, and below that I'm putting down an engine plate. Now this is going to let me strap down a bunch of engines, and you can see with those in place, I wanted to try this out. Now, somewhat unsurprisingly, these engines weren't able to get this big fuel tank off the ground, and I can see here I had to drain most of the fuel before I was able to get any thrust. Now clearly, I was going to need a lot more thrust on this rocket if I wanted to get it off the ground earlier, so in order to do that, you can see that what I'm doing is copying on another engine plate with another set of engines. And by putting it below the first one, this should let me get in the air, although I kind of messed up the staging on it, and it fell apart immediately. So I tried fixing this here, but now I was overheating the bottom engine plate and causing it to explode on the launch pad. So I tried moving it further apart, but even this still wasn't quite far enough and it was still exploding. So I decided to clear off what I had, and you can see I'm switching to a new engine type. Now this is going to be the VNR engine, and once I got a bunch of these in place here, the advantage of these is that I can stack a bunch more on the edges like this, and hopefully get a bit more thrust. Now at first, I wasn't really getting off the launch pad, but you can see once again, once enough fuel's drained out, I'm able to start to get off. Now this time though, getting more thrust isn't actually all that hard, and you can see that I'm able to just keep pushing more engines into that little space. Now that also helped that it switched to a smaller fuel tank here, and you can see now I'm really rocketing off the launch pad. That was a really good performance here, and once I saw that, I thought that I might even be able to add on a second fuel tank. And trying this out here, while it struggled a little bit at first, I was getting off the launch pad at least, and you can see that I was getting a little higher than before. And for some reason, I fell on the ground here and didn't immediately explode. I'm really not sure how that was even possible, but at the very least here, I wanted to try adding on another stage and see if I could set a new height record. Now the only thing is this top stage was going to need to be really light, because adding on any more weight was going to prevent this from coming off the launch pad. Now fortunately, my little solid rocket fuel booster actually did pretty well here, and while I was losing speed,
speed for a little while. I wasn't losing speed at a particularly quick rate, and I was able to turn that around and get myself up to around 10,000 meters. That was a pretty good showing, and I realized I could actually switch off from using those Venor engines to using these Mammoth engines. Now, the advantage of the Mammoth engines is they have a better thrust to weight ratio, and otherwise, they're actually pretty much the same as the Venor engines. Now, you see, I could stack a huge amount of these on the bottom here, and trying this out, it works in pretty much the same way as before. I'm able to get up a little bit higher, and that's mainly just because those engines are a little bit more efficient. Now, for the real improvement, though, I wanted to add on another stage, and you can see I did that by adding on three identical fuel tanks to the side of the rocket. And with this, I wanted to try getting off the ground here, and while once again I had to drain a little bit of fuel before I could take off, at the very least, I was able to gain a little bit of speed earlier, and switching over to this middle stage here, I could pick up right where that left off. And this, of course, made a pretty big improvement, and now for the first time, I was able to get just barely over 10,000 meters. Now, that was pretty good, and an obvious improvement I saw was switching to using four rockets on the side of this to get it off the launch pad earlier. Now, another idea I had was also adding on a fairing to the top to make it a little bit more aerodynamic. Now, these things combined, I wanted to see how much better I could do here, and trying this out, while I didn't really get off the launch pad any better than before, I was hoping that that fairing on top would help me out a lot here, and you see as I'm going up higher, I was actually making better pace than before. This time, I was getting up over 11,000 meters which was good, but it was still a pretty far distance from what I needed, and trying to modify this rocket anymore caused it to explode more often than not. Now, I thought that I was definitely onto something here, though, and I was just gonna have to make this way more efficient in order to get into orbit. So you can see here, I threw down a small fuel tank and a mammoth engine, and this was gonna make up my second stage. I still wanted to use the solid rocket fuel booster for my top stage, but you can also see here, I'm switching out that command pod for just a seat. This ends up being a lot less later, and I was hoping this would help me out a lot. Now on the bottom, you can see I threw down an engine plate, and once I got my mammoth engine back in place here, I threw down a fuel tank, and what I'm doing is putting down another engine plate. Now you can see I got those two mammoth engines on the bottom, but what I'm also doing is adding in a fuel line. I realized a critical piece of this is going to be able to have every engine running at once, and what that fuel line is going to let me do is transfer fuel from the bottom tank into the top tank. Now they were a little too close together at first, and I ended up heating it up, but I realized what I could do is stack more engine plates on each other to increase this distance, and sure enough, eventually here, I was able to get them to both burn without exploding. And there was a little bit of a thrust problem at first, though, and an easy way to fix that is just adding on even more engines. So with all these in place now, you can see me coming off the launch pad, and sure enough, this seemed to be working pretty well. Now, once I saw that, I knew that the all-engine strategy was gonna be the only way to make this work, and you can see next, I added on four more boosters, and all of these share a fuel line to that center tank. So when I try launching this off, everything fires at once, and once I drain their fuel, I could drop them off to save a little bit of weight. With this strategy, you can see that I was able to get over 40,000 meters, and this is telling me that I might actually be able to make this all work. So once again here, I decided to add in a fairing, and this was just to hopefully make the top a little bit more aerodynamic, but after that, you can see me just adding in more and more boosters, and the plan is basically to have all these launch at once, and just keep dropping them as I drain their tanks. And every time I was adding on more boosters, I was able to get up a little higher than before, and for once here, I was able to get over 83,000 meters. So already with this design, technically I've gotten out of the atmosphere, and therefore I'm in space. Just looking at this though, I thought I could take this a lot further, and what I wanted to try to do now was see if I could expand the challenge and get myself into orbit. By cheating myself up here, you can see that I need to get up to 7,000 meters per second, and that's going to take take something significantly more substantial than what I have now. So it's pretty much just time to add on more and more boosters very carefully in order to have this thing not explode on me at any point. Now in this next flight, for the first time, I wanted to try circularizing a little bit, and you can see once I finished burning, I checked out my trajectory, and while well, it wasn't in orbit, it at least was starting to look like one. Now originally, my plan was to just start putting on boosters pretty aimlessly, and I was hoping eventually I'd be able to get there, although I reached a point like this where there's just such a mass of engines that it was getting very laggy 
and I wasn't really getting that much higher than before. Now, an easy thing that I realized is that instead of adding on a bunch of boosters to the bottom, I could actually add on one more stage to the top, and the way I was going to do that was adding on a bunch of these Separatron rockets. These are super light, but if you have a small rocket, they can pack a pretty good punch, and you can see once I got all those in place there, that was a pretty big improvement for really not a lot of extra weight, and that was the kind of stuff I was looking to do a lot of. And I also streamlined my rockets on the bottom here, and you can see instead of that big mass, I'm kind of going for the snowflake design. This lets me drop off the boosters much easier, and you can see here, I'm able to get way higher than I ever was before, and gain a ton more speed. And after just adding on a bunch more of these boosters, I was ready for my full orbit attempt. Now, just looking at this on the launch pad, the amount of lag that was here told me that if this rocket wasn't gonna work, at least my computer wasn't really gonna be able to handle anything else. So this attempt here, you can see I'm burning up more, and the snowflake design is working really well to keep collisions from happening with my rocket. Now, even with this though, this last drop can be a little bit dangerous here, but fortunately, everything did seem to peel off correctly, and getting down to the last liquid fuel stage, you can see I added an extra fuel tank, and this just buys me a little bit more time to get out of the atmosphere before I launch off the solid rocket fuel boosters. And you can see me launching these off now, and I do get a really solid boost off of these, and especially the last two stages carry a huge punch here, and I was able to get up to 5,000 meters per second. Now checking this out on the map here, you can see I have a pretty solid arc going on, but I'm still about 2,000 meters per second away. And while I think this design could actually get me there, the limiting factor here is going to be the fact that if you try adding on all those extra parts, the game kind of ends up crashing on you more often than not. Now, that ended up being a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, and if you guys have any more ideas for challenges I could do Kerbal Space Program, definitely make sure to leave them down below. And of course, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.